Hi everyone, my name is Peter. Thanks for joining me at Our Worship Sound, where we're going to make worship keyboard technique and technology easier. We do a lot of videos talking about chords and melodies and rhythms and different aspects of keyboard playing, but I think sometimes it's helpful to see it all come together in a song. So I want to talk through those three things in uh, how I use them in the cover performance of Endless Alleluia. So first of all, let's talk about chords. We're playing in the key of A major. So this scale, we've got three sharps, F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp in the scale. Our primary chords are gonna be the one chord, um, which is uh, several times played as a one over its third in the bass. We'll talk about that a little bit more. The chord built off the four note of the scale, D, and the five chord, E, and the six chord, F sharp minor. And those are the mo main chords we see throughout this. As I started out playing this song, I stuck with pretty simple voicings, um, unaltered, so just played, a, played them as they were. Uh, I ended up playing them in root position with the root of the chord on the bottom. And I think the reason why I like that is because the melody kind of comes into that F sharp a lot, like, in the morning when I ride. So I kind of felt like it brought out that melody a little bit more. Um, so I play the D. E, both in root position, and then when I go to the A slash C sharp, that means an A chord uh, over a C sharp in the left hand, and I almost always will omit that bass note from the right hand, so I'll actually play it this way, okay? So it's just like the regular A chord in root position, except I left out the C sharp and left it in the bass. Gives a nice spread out voicing, okay? So I started out with pretty simple rhythms, um, very simple chords. And then found that as I went through the song, I started altering the chords a little bit more. And so instead of a D chord, I played uh, what we call a D2 chord. And so to explain that, every chord is built off of one, three, and five. And in a two chord, you leave out the third and add the second note. And so we have a one, two, five chord. And I use that on D. And then for the E chord, I played a sus four chord, okay, which works well for the fifth chord of the key. So sus4, and I could resolve it or I could leave it there as well. Um, same thing basically for the A over C sharp. I might add the 2 to this chord. So we end up with a 2 chord in root position again. Um, and then we're back to our D. Okay. Um, another thing that I did as we went through the song is I started to uh, kind of play octaves. So I would add another note to the chord that would be an octave doubling of the top note of the chord. So if I was playing D2 like this, I would add an A below it, and that would just fill out the chord and give a bigger sound. And then for this F sharp minor chord that happens during the chorus, um, I kind of kind of played it like the A over C sharp, except with an F sharp in the bass. So we get the one, the three, we left out the five, and actually added a seven. Okay, and you bring all these chord alterations together, and the reason why I make you know I add the two to this one, and add the four to this one, and add the the what the four to that one as well. The reason why that works is because each time I'm adding either the first note of the scale or the fifth note of the scale. Okay, so this A and the E, just because of where they are in the key of A major, they're going to sound good in any of these chords. So I take the D chord and I add the E to, e to it. I take the E chord and I replace the G sharp with an A because it's the first note of the scale. Um, with the F sharp minor, actually I add the two, or actually I add the, um, uh, the, the fifth to it. Okay? And it just fills out these chords and gives it kind of that modern sound that you're used to hearing on... on uh, good recordings okay so just add a lot of adding a lot of the first and fifth scale note to these chords is going to sound good all right so and then as i went through like i said i added octaves now let's shift into the rhythm a little bit um one thing i did rhythmically um with the chords is as i as the song started building a little bit i started emphasizing beats one and four so pretty simple rhythms throughout the whole thing but i found myself emphasizing two and four kind of like you would if you're you know, if you're thinking of a drum groove like the snare is going to happen on two and four. It's just a point of emphasis 
um, in this style. So I was playing. I might have played other notes on different beats, but I'm really kind of accenting those two and four. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. And then um, from beats two to four, I would also kind of change the inversion or change where I was playing the chord. So I might play here for D2 on beat two, and then jump up to here on beat four, just to give it a little bit of movement. So like. Okay, so that was a rhythm thing that I implemented with the chords. A lot of the rhythms that I implement are more along the lines of with the, what I do with the melodies. Okay, so. Um, and then, so I'll kind of mix in, I'll talk about kind of rhythm and melody at the same time. Um, what I did a lot in this uh, song was I did a lot of using the, uh, the seventh note of the scale, the first note of the scale, and the fifth note of the scale. So let's review the scale really quick. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here's the seventh note, and then the first note, and then the fifth note. So m a lot of the melodies that were based on that. So I did... So a lot of that G sharp, A, and E. Um, and, and so that's using an eighth note rhythm in octaves. Okay, so pretty simple technique there. Um, and then another thing I did was if I was playing just single notes, I might play a one, two E, N, and something like that. So I do like a one. Starting it on beat two, and then it's like two sixteenth notes and an eighth note, but one, two, three, and. and so that was another rhythm that I implemented um, in the course of playing these melodies. Okay, and then there's something that I did at the end, which I really kind of worked out specifically for this song. At the end, when I'm just playing piano, not singing, I did. Um, So the basis of it is I'm playing the melody in octaves. Okay, but I'm sweetening it a little bit by adding the third, uh, like a third above or a third below the top. So starting out with the C sharp, I added a third, so one, two, three. Just following the notes of the scale. So it's really important to know where your scale notes and where your sharps are happening within the scale. Same thing for this next stretch, adding a third above the bottom note. And then just through trial and error, I found out that to switch to this next part, it worked better to add a third below the top note. So again, that was just trial and error, but to put it all together is, So just a nice touch, and I had to practice that a little bit just to make sure it was smooth. Um, but it was a nice touch for the end of the song. So uh, chords, melodies, and, and rhythms working in there. Um, yeah, just working in there, some different concepts. So I really talk a lot about these concepts in the three different um, piano courses that I have. They're all grouped together and called Fluent Piano. There's a course on chords. There's a course for um, melodies. And then there's a course that kind of ties uh, a all of it together in uh, something called fluent piano background. It's more about just playing background music and how you do that artfully at different times, like during a church service. Uh, and then the rhythm aspect is really um, covered in both the chords and the melodic. So if you're interested in those, you can check it out at fluentpiano.com. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you soon.